Hi, I'm Tim Farrell. Welcome back to the TSFA Learning On Demand. This is another part of our series on the elements and principles of floral design. If you haven't joined us so far and this is your first episode, make sure you sign on and look at the others because they all build so we have a better understanding of what we do as floral designers. So in this segment, we're going to talk about fragrance in floral design. Fragrance is very important and very specific to artists in the floral design field. We share many of the other elements and principles of design with other mediums of art, but fragrance is very special to us and something that we should address as floral designers in order to make our compositions the best that they can be for those that are going to receive them. So stay tuned. We're going to get into this very shortly. We're going to continue referring to this book, The AIFD Guide to Floral Design. It's published by the American Institute of Floral Designers and really is what I think the best publication on the market as far as learning about floral design. This is a great study tool and reference for you if you're going for some kind of floral accreditation. It may be your AIFD or your CFD through the American Institute of Floral Designers or possibly your PCF, which is the Professional Certified Florist designation available through the Texas State Florist Association. In any case, it's a great publication and if you look at the slide that comes up next, you'll see how to get this book through the Texas State Florist Association. So the definition of fragrance from our guide is a sweet or pleasant odor perceived by the sense of smell. What does that mean? It, it really, if you think about it, flowers and fragrance are very closely associated. Whenever you see somebody receive a bouquet of flowers, what's the first thing they do? They bring it up to their face, they breathe it in, and they want to experience that beautiful sense of smell that comes with the flowers. So as a good floral designer, we want to keep this in mind and try to remember that every bouquet that we send out, every bouquet that we give to a customer should have some pleasant experience of fragrance associated with it. There really is nothing more disappointing to a customer than getting a bouquet of flowers and putting their face to them and just kind of breathing it in and getting nothing. The funny part is that in the evolution of flowers, there's a reverse relationship between the longevity of flowers and the fragrance. And, and that is somehow engineered in the world on purpose because the flowers that, that don't last the longest need to attract those pollinators to them quicker and fragrance gives them that advantage. We found that over the years, some of our varieties of flowers have, have been bred so that they produce larger blooms or higher petal counts or more intense flowers. But the farms that were seeking those characteristics kind of forgot about fragrance. So fragrance has been bred out of a lot of things over the years. But now we're finding there are many farms and many botanists that are very conscious of this and are working very hard to bring fragrance back into these commercially grown flowers because they see the value and the value that we can give to our customers with the added fragrance in our flowers. So here's our first example of a floral arrangement that displays fragrance. Now, I understand this is a visual medium that we're learning on, so it's gonna be hard for you to get this, but if you're familiar enough with flowers, you'll be able to understand and remember the fragrance of these lilies. The funny part is, fragrance and the sense of smell is actually one of our senses that is most closely connected with memory. So the human brain actually will remember certain events or times in life based on fragrances and as they re-experience them, that'll bring them back to mind. So that's why this has such an emotional impact on our product and the experiences that our customers have with it. But in this first example, we have these beautiful sore bone lilies. And these are brought to us from cow flowers, uh, a conglomerate of beautiful farms and wonderful growers, um, mostly in the state of California, that bring us some great product. But, but this particular variety of an oriental lily is called sore bone. 
and it is one of those oriental lilies that has beautiful coloration as you can see here it's not too dark it's a little bit paler than maybe stargazers it has a beautiful tonation of pink but the fragrance is really beautiful with these some of the oriental lilies have fragrances that are very very strong and very intoxicating these are a little bit lighter and very pleasant so we need to think about situations where fragrance is important a vase of larger oriental lilies that are more potent with fragrance may be too much in a small confined area but something like this is very pretty and very nice and just fills a room with a lighter perfume that's wonderful more simplistically we're working with just one fragrance here so there's there's nothing more confusing or nothing too confusing i should say for the person they understand the fragrance comes from the lilies this is it it's very beautiful very pure a sweet intoxicating smell So in our next example, we're going to just step it up a little bit. And it's going to be two different types of florals we're using in this. So instead of being a monofloral arrangement, we have two different varieties. We have the beautiful light lavender stock, and we have these gorgeous pale green carnations. This variety is actually called Prado, and it's a beautiful pale celery green. The coloration of both the flowers is very similar in that they're pale, but what we're doing here with fragrance is we're actually repeating a type of fragrance. Both the stock and the carnations have almost a clove type of a fragrance to them. They're a little bit different from each other, but they're very, very similar. So by using two similar fragrances that are close to each other in the same design, we're using the principle of design called repetition to repeat the fragrance and give strength to that element of design, which is fragrance. So again, breathe in. There's a lot of flowers here. But the smell is not complicated because those two fragrances are so similar. So that's how we use repetition in fragrance in a floral design. And now, in this next design, we're going to talk about blending fragrances. To do this, we're going to look for fragrances that are similar, but not closely the same. Think of it as using the principle of harmony with the fragrance. Where we're finding things that go well together and don't contrast each other much, but that just go well together. So for this design, we use, use the container, which is the Teleflora Bedazzling Beauty Cylinder. It has a great color palette to it, and we've repeated that in the flowers. But as far as fragrance goes, we've used some of the beautiful hybrid tea roses. Um, this one is called Pink Floyd. We've used some miniature carnations, which again have that softer clovey fragrance. And then the two things, or three things, we actually have in this design with a little bit more fragrance are the lavender, the freesia, and the sweet pea. All three of them are softer, more sweet fragrances, so they blend together. The fun part about designing like this, when keeping fragrance in mind, is that you can actually become an expert like people in the perfume industry that learn to combine some different fragrances so that when they are perceived by somebody coming up to the design, if they were, say, blindfolded, they may not be able to identify exactly what that is because these three things have blended together to become something new. And when we do that, we actually start to create with the element of fragrance. We're not just designers that use fragrance, but we think very purposefully of how to blend things together and mix things together so we create a new fragrance. And when we do that, that's when I feel we are working at our best as floral designers. Okay, let's have some fun creating with fragrance. The springtime oasis is actually what I like to use for this because I'm going to be using some of the softer stemmed spring flowers and the springtime oasis actually holds much more water than any of the standard or deluxe forms of the oasis product. It has a higher density of water to foam ratio and, and that's why softer stem flowers will drink very well out of this. So I choose to use this a lot in springtime arrangements. So we're just going to start and thinking about fragrance, we're going to try to 
put together a lot of different fragrances in this design. So we not only have blended fragrances, but we have contrasting or competing fragrances in the same design. It actually makes it a much more complex human experience for a nose to come up to this and to smell these different things and, and to figure out, wow, how they beautifully blend together, almost like an orchestra of many different instruments and music. That's how the fragrances of these are going to blend in the same design. So let's just get started. We're going to start with the beautiful myrtle. And this for me, as far as foliages go, is the absolute best for fragrance. I could have an entire vase of just this in my home in a vase and love it just for the fragrance that it brings. And, and you can see that, that the, the myrtle, you can even just snap it. And as you snap it and put it into the design, just that little bit of breakage of the stem is enough to release the fragrance and have it pretty much fill the area around you. So we're going to use a little bit of myrtle and pop this into the design just to give us some skeletal bones, we'll say, to the arrangement and to start maybe achieving the form that we want in the entire design. Some of the smaller pieces we're going to actually grab and cut with our knife and give it a real good cut. But just that little bit of fragrance from the myrtle already starts to achieve our effect in fragrance and design. Next, how about a little bit of mint? And again, a much stronger, more dominant fragrance. And we will talk later about um, the principle of dominance in design, but this dominant fragrance is gonna be very strong and very powerful in this design. And we're gonna take the mint and just kind of pop this into the design as well too. Cutting very sharply on an angle and inserting the mint through the design. And remember, front and back, very important, because that lets the eye ride through the design. And next, just a little bit of eucalyptus. And this, because of the, the menthol fragrance that this has in it, will again add to that combination or that recipe of fragrances that we have in the design. And all of these, remember, these are going to be just kind of like the supporting stars to the flowers that are in there, with the exception of the mint. That's very strong and is always going to remain very dominant in this design as far as fragrance goes. And now let's pick some flowers to go with this. Okay, so the first floral material we're going to pick is this baronia. Uh, again, very seasonably available, but it has a very distinct fragrance, something that most people are not familiar with, but it's very, very organic smelling and, and very fragrant. And we're going to cut this and allow this to just cascade out and away from the center of the design. And even some of the pieces on the lower part of the stem, we're going to make sure we cut and use in deep so we don't waste any of that material. I love the, the beautiful cascading motion that this baronia gives to a design. Um, they're almost like, if you see it up close, like little tiny lanterns or Japanese lanterns uh, as far as those hot pink little blooms on here. I believe it is a relative of Heather. So it has a similar line structure to Heather, but I just love the fragrance of it and I love the color and the texture that that adds to our design. Yeah, it's looking good so far. What else can we add? Okay, my next choice, back to stock. I love stock for fragrance. I think it has a beautiful, beautiful, sweet aroma. And, you know, again, in this design is going to be very beautiful and soft to bounce against the more dominant fragrances of the, of the baronia and the mint that we have in here already. So we're going to cut and insert these all around in this design. This design style is going to be a little bit more bohemian, maybe a little bit looser and a little bit more organic looking in that it doesn't quite have that really well-defined shape that we're used to in some of the more traditional Western floral designs. I'm going to bring that in the front too. And I love just these different radials and how they pop out from the center of the design. But I can tell already just these combinations of fragrances is just fabulous. And it's going to work really well for your customers. And look at these beautiful peonies. These are just magnificent. These were brought to us by one of our other underwriters, which is Milano and Company. These gorgeous Sarah Bernhardt peonies are not only fabulous for color, but the fragrance is just pure and beautiful. P 
peonies are one of those flowers that have a distinctive fragrance. And that's why you'll see a peony room freshener or a peony candle on the market because it has a very special smell that's all their own. So as we place these in the design, we're going to give them a, a place where they fill up a lot of space in the design, but also give them each their own room to breathe and to give off that beautiful fragrance. And next up, the beautiful sorbonne lilies again. Wow, very perfumey, very nice. And we're going to cut some of these blooms a little bit shorter and work them in down low. But these, again, being a stronger fragrance, these are going to be the flowers that start to give fragrance some great contrast in this design. Your nose is going to start to explore this and actually kind of start to think, wow, what do I want to find next? And you will find the lily fragrance. But then as you get past the dominance of that fragrance, you might get into the peony and then another flower. So, so as somebody comes up to a design and experiences something with all these beautiful fragrances in there, things will take over, things will take backseat, things will come to the front again. So it becomes a very interactive experience as far as fragrance goes in the floral design. I love these lilies. Sorbonne is one of my favorite oriental lilies. Yeah. Okay, what else can we add? Okay, we may add something in the design that doesn't have fragrance, and that's because we need it for another reason, but everything in this design doesn't have a fragrance in it. So this flower, the astilbe, we're just adding for texture and as a filler to kind of fill in some of the gaps between the other flowers. But this also evokes a very beautiful romantic feeling to it because of the, the delicacy of the flower and the texture that it brings to the design. So just a little bit of a still be here and there. And even in some of the stems, I want to leave that foliage on because I like the foliage on that as well too. And we'll extend it maybe out in different areas to let it just kind of explode from this design. One of the most iconic fragrances in floral design and in flowers is lavender. People have read about it in literature. People have seen it through history. And again, when you have this in a design, it's that calming lavender fragrance that becomes very important. So just a little bit of this. We don't need to use every bit of it, but a little bit of this through the design will add just another layer of fragrance and another very pleasant experience for the human nose to follow. Okay, why not just go over the top with some beautiful Cymbidium orchids? These are just beautiful, and that, that spicy fragrance that they allow for us to smell will be another different element that's not in the design already. It will complement and maybe even contrast some of the fragrances that are there in this design. But it will just give us now this, this full bouquet of fragrances all within the same floral design. So we're going to take the stem and just insert the mini cymbidium as a whole into this design in one spot. And then we're going to take some of these burgundy cymbidiums and we're going to cut these blooms off individually and put them into water tubes. I have some water tubes here that are really meant for this. They're nice because they have the little extenders on there. So if we cut these and place them individually into the water tubes, we can then insert them into the design to give us that spot where we need something special and another darker value of color to bring your eye through the design. But Man, these, the fragrance of these is really, really great. It, it almost smells like it could be um, like a man's uh, aftershave or something like that because it's not a pretty sweet fragrance. It's definitely more of a spicy fragrance. And another one. I find with these, it's if you take your knife and put a little slit in the top of the water tube, it actually helps that cymbidium bloom go in there a little bit easier and give it a great water source. And then just one more, and we're going to reflex the petals back on this a little bit. And maybe just down in this corner right about here. Yeah. And now I'm just going to breathe it all in. That is one incredible experience as far as fragrance goes in floral design. So let's refer back again to the AIFD guide to see what it has to say about fragrance. 
we already talked about the definition and we talked about some of the other uses and blending of fragrances but one of the things I found in here to be most interesting is it points out that we really need to be considerate of the environment that the arrangement is going into when we think about using fragrance in design. It sounds very simple but really what it takes is understanding where the design is going to be. If we had a design what that was maybe like the last one, which was filled with so many different fragrances and some very dominant fragrances like the Oriental Lilies and the Mint and the Baronia, that may be too much for, say, a hospital room, a very small, confined area where one person is there and maybe even having difficulty breathing. So we need to be very considerate of what we use fragrance for and the purpose for where it's going. Also, in the opposite extent, if we have a very large venue with very open spaces, it's maybe indoors, having many things with fragrance in it make it just that much more pleasurable of an experience as people come into that room. Maybe it's a wedding reception or a large party for some reason, but as people come into the room and they not only visually are impacted by the flowers, but they get hit with that beautiful aroma of flowers as well. The other thing that's very interesting with fragrance is when you have flowers that are in a dining setting and on the table, you want to be careful not to use too much fragrance that close to the table level because the sense of smell actually does interfere or interplay with the sense of taste in the human mind. So many, many fragrances of flowers on the table will actually change the perception of the taste of the food that the people are experiencing. So I think the more you read about fragrance and more you understand about different things like you can find in the AIFD guide, the better a floral designer you'll be as far as using fragrance in your design. So that completes our segment on fragrance and design. I hope you've enjoyed these flowers and the even memory of the fragrances that they have as you've watched this part of the program. And you've learned about blending and contrasting and putting other fragrances together to create beautiful floral compositions, not only for the eye, but for the nose. Please join us next time when we're gonna explore the element of size in floral design. Thank you so much for joining us. My name's Tim Farrell. See you next time.